Hello. Okay. Um, I am going to attempt. Uh, I say attempt because this is about the eighth time I've tried to do this video. Um, dropping cameras, taking random phone calls, uh, having corrupt videos when I try to upload them. All sorts of stuff going on. Anyway, I'm going to attempt to make a video on the part editor and patterns. So here we go. Okay, these blue chaps here are parts. And basically a part contains all the event data, like all the notes, uh, velocity and all that sort of stuff. Um, they in turn can be turned into patterns. Now patterns store all the data within that part and keep it like safe as it were. Uh, it gives it a number um, <clears throat> and if you were to then copy a pattern um, that copy will have the same number as the original pattern. Um, if you then edit the original one or even the copy then they both will be affected identically uh, since they share the same set of events. Um, hopefully that makes sense um, and if not it will hopefully become clearer when you've seen the whole of the video if I make it to the end. <laughs> right. So um, to get into the part editor you can either highlight the part and hit edit or you can double tap on it like that. Um, the layout's kind of similar to the song editor. You've still got the move uh, move button up here. Um, you've got a drop down menu on the right here which I'll come to in a bit. Um, up the left hand side because I am at the moment on channel 5 and 6 uh, which are dedicated to the TRG16s each of these 16 pads are represented up the side here from 1 to 16. <clears throat> um, if I was in the synth, say up here, then you get the keyboard instead. Um, but back down here, come on, there we go. Um, down the bottom the menu is pretty much the same, the only difference is the tools here. Uh, you've got the grid, which um, I've got it set to 16 here, so that means that for every bar, so between 1 and 2 here, uh, there are 16 divisions, the uh, vertical lines here. Um, and so if you do any editing within this, which uh, you do by selecting the uh, note you want to edit, and then like in the song editor you've got the move tools here so this one on the left moves it this one on the right lengthens or shortens it and this one up here moves it up and down if you were to move it um, it will lock to those vertical lines like that um, so obviously you can change it up and down you can turn it off as well um, whatever suits uh, the style of music you're doing basically um, you've got a couple more um, functions here as well. I've actually put the swing up to 75% because, uh, well, I wanted the drum loop to have a bit of swing to it, which um, hopefully you'll hear uh, in a second. Um, copy, as it says, copy all events from pattern number. Um, clean. You've got three options here, and they explain what they are underneath so just have a quick read of them um, okay right so got a drum loop here I'll play it for you you get the idea cool um, what I plan to do is do an 8 bar loop eventually so um, to start with, I'm going to copy this drum loop, this this pattern, uh, sorry, this part here, just over one, uh, because I want to make a slight variation in this copy. And obviously, whilst these are still parts, I can change this second one here, and it won't affect this first one. 
So let's go into it there. Zoom in a bit. I'm going to draw in this extra. I want to put an extra snare at the end. Um, so I'm going to use the draw function here. And I know that my snare is on pad 2. So if you highlight draw and then <clears throat> if you put your finger on the screen and hold it on the screen, it will zoom in and you can audition the sounds so you can get the right one. So like this. So I've hit the wrong one there, but keeping the finger on I can move down until I'm on the right uh, pad. I'll let go and we've got an extra snare in there. Um, unhighlight draw, which I tend to forget to do and then start using the move buttons and draw at loads of random events everywhere. So yeah, always unhighlight it. Um, okay, and at this point I can show you what this drop down menu on the right does. Um, can I highlight that that new snare and um, I'm going to choose velocity this basically um, it, it has all the uh, controller values all the event types down here so you can sort of edit them uh, like this for example this is velocity showed by the volume 0 to 127 up the left here um, so I've highlighted that one and I just want to bring the volume of that snare hit down uh, which you do by dragging on this one on the right I'm going to bring it down quite a lot because I just want it to go at the end of the loop just like a kind of extra little flick on the snare um, and when you're happy with that click done um, just have a listen Cool. Um, right, let's move that out of the way. Now at this stage I'm going to turn the original loop into a pattern. Uh, which is really straightforward. Highlight it, go to more, properties and just hit convert to pattern. Excuse me. And um, there it is, pattern number one. You can When you've got loads of patterns later on you can choose which one you want to use. but number one will do for now you get a little one in the corner and it changes colour, lovely um, I'm going to convert this other slightly uh, uh, the variation there to pattern number two cool alright and I'll come back to those in a second going back to the beginning um, on channel six here I've got some extra hi-hats <clears throat> like this Um, and for the purpose of this demo I know that um, up to bar 7 they're going to be the same, doing the same thing so I could just copy that over and copy it over but instead I'm going to convert that to another pattern and what you can do is just drag that along for the length of time you want that pattern to repeat itself like this and it copies it for you which is nice and helpful. Um, <clears throat> right, okay. Also, I can do that with this, the original drum loop, just up to there. Uh, now, these last two at the end here, um, I've got an extra bit of percussion in there, and I stupidly, originally, I recorded the percussion on the wrong channel, doesn't matter what channel you record it on but for this demo I wanted it on 6 and I put it on 5 uh, with the main drum hits <clears throat> um, but I thought I'd leave it on there and show you how you can then move uh, it to the other channel because I hoped you'd be able to just highlight that one move it down Oops. select them all and then join them but it won't let you so put that back to where it was. Um, just a quick workaround, if you move them next to each other then join them up by selecting them all, hit join, then go into the part editor then 
you've got them both together. So on this side is the original drums and these extra blocks, the, the, the larger blocks here are the extra percussion. Um, and then on this side is the hi-hats. And I want those percussions with those hi-hats. So I'm just going to select those ones and drag them over. Cool. Just check it's working. Nice. Okay, so then I'm just going to split those again. Obviously, highlight the whole thing, put the uh, playhead where you want to split them. More, split, and then you can just move the hi-hats with the extra percussion back into place. Um, and whilst it's highlighted I'm going to put that into uh, pattern 4 just so I know that they're slightly different from these hi-hats here. Um, actually whilst I'm here I'm going to just take out these last yeah, these last two hits, highlight them, delete, and they're gone. Uh, and turn that into pattern 5. Okay, right. Now, the synth wise, I've already pre recorded some stuff. Um, the beginning here, I've just got this kind of, I don't know, atmospheric y, spooky kind of synth. Um, which I don't know is actually going to carry very well on this microphone, but it sounds a bit like this. Um, and I just want to throw some automation on that quickly. So, with the, using the pads. So, I'm just going to record for a bar and just uh, draw it in here. Right, so if I, I'm gonna, I don't want that to happen all the way through, but I'm just gonna make it. I'm gonna turn that one into another pattern, um, and then this one here doesn't have that automation on, but I want this one to have it as well. So simply delete that one, copy that one over, and pop it there. Cool. And also, you can see that automation I recorded. You've got the pad one here. There it is. And the Y as well. So then you could go in, select them, adjust them as well if you wanted to fine tune it afterwards. Um, <clears throat> and as for these three up here, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'll come to those, I'll play them for you in a bit, but the next video I'm going to do resampling and bouncing stuff down, so I will be uh, recording all those into one file, which you can then play either through one synth on the keyboard or through, uh, you can assign it to one of these hits, uh, one of these pads here, uh, thus freeing up all the, the other um, channels. But as I say, I'll do that in the next video. Um, I think that is it. I've got about 50 seconds left. So have a listen. Let's... Come on. Here we go. <laughs> There we go. Right, all done. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll uh, catch you in the next one. Um, feel free to subscribe and all that gummins. See you soon. Bye bye.